Well, hello, Shoreline Church. It is our last Sunday of the year. And in some ways, the year has seemed to drag on forever. And in some ways, it's like it's gone. But uh, I, I'm so excited to wrap up the year with you uh, as we uh, finish up this series called Adore. What does it mean to adore the God that we love, to adore Jesus Christ, the God who came among us, to adore the spirit of the living God who lives in us and who is with us? And so we're only online uh, and so we're, we're glad to be with you in your home, in a hotel room, wherever you've traveled to. Thank you for joining us for worship. And, and we're going to just, just really dig into God's word and think about as we come to the end of this year, uh, what does it mean to adore the one who's on the throne? And, and some of you have actually made comment to me that you've started talking about in the course of this year in a way you never had before, how God is on the throne, how you trust the one who's on the throne. Because through our Monday, Wednesday, Friday devotionals that became eventually Tuesday, Thursday devotionals, which became Wednesday devotionals. We kind of keep changing things as we go through the year through my letters on Saturdays, through the sermons. We've talked a lot this year about the reality that our God is on the throne. He rules, he reigns, he's in charge. He's not surprised by what's going on. And yet in a, in a difficult year like this, you can almost in your heart and mind wonder, is, is God... You know, you wouldn't say it, but you know, is God really still on the throne? Is God in charge? I mean, with all the stuff that's going on, with all that I'm going through, with all that I see in our world, you know, is God still on the throne? And if you're a follower of Jesus, you know the answer. The answer is yes, but sometimes our hearts are kind of like, yeah, but how could all this be happening? Maybe you're not yet a follower of Jesus. And, and I hope that what you hear today is that the God that we've gathered to adore, the God that we worship, is a God who is, is on the throne, he is in charge, he is in control. No matter how crazy the world gets, we understand and we believe that God is on the throne and that he rules and he reigns. And so we're gonna walk through just some different thoughts about what it means to acknowledge that God is on the throne. And so here's one thought, and some of you are note takers, and so you're gonna see on your Shoreline app, uh, if you follow that or on the notes on our website, uh, you're gonna see some different thoughts that we're gonna walk through together. So in a year when everything seemed out of control, we acknowledge that God is still on the throne. You know, is, is, is God on the throne during a pandemic? The answer is yes. When there's turmoil, there's been a lot of conflict this year. Tensions between people, uh, pol polarized people with very different points of view. And it used to seem like people could disagree and sit down and have lunch together and talk about it and, 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 you know, and, and be lively in their conversation, be, be articulate and be honest about their feelings. Say, you know, we really disagree on that. And this year at times it's felt like, man, if we don't agree, we, I've heard people say, if someone doesn't agree with you, you should end the friendship. It's like, wait a minute. As followers of Jesus, uh, we think in, in bigger terms than that. We worship a God that no matter how crazy things seem to get, he's still on the throne. In a year where there's been wildfires and evacuations, uh, Sherry and I, uh, had a couple nights where we went to bed at night and we could look out the window of our bedroom to the glow of the burning hill two hills over from us and praying, okay, Lord, well, they'll tell us if we need to clear out here. And they came and told us, clear out. So wildfires, evacuations, our home didn't burn down, praise the Lord, but that's been part of the year. Is God still on the throne? Uh, sheltering in place, sheltering at home, even terms we didn't even, a year ago, you'd never thought of that term. It's like they're making up stuff to describe what's going on right now. Uh, you probably have a few different face masks and most of you never had a face mask before, but that's part of our world. Is, is, is God in, on the throne when we're wearing face masks, when we're out in public? Uh, is God on the throne when our services are outdoor or online and we can't even gather in our church building? You know, it, the church where, where God invites his people to gather, is, is God still on the throne? When, when you can't meet with people, but you know, you're into Zoom meetings and you're, you've done Zoom to the point where you're exhausted, Zoom to the point where you're like, man, I'm fatigued with all this stuff. What I want to think about today is that the God we worship, the God who, who we adore, the God that we talk about at showing that if not yet a Christian, you come to faith in him, the God that will, will be your God and watch over your life. Is he on the throne during times like this? And, and this is such an important topic. I can't really bring this message alone. I'm going to team teach with four different people who are part of Shoreline. They're going to share testimonies woven through this message. So you can hear from people who've discovered that God is on the throne even in a year like this, even when times are difficult. So I'm gonna walk through some different topics, six different topics, and ask the question, you know, where is God? Is God on the throne? Is God sovereign and in charge even in a time like this? So, so here's, here's the first one. In a year of pandemic and health challenges, 
God is still the great healer. The God on the throne is still the great healing God. I'm going to read from Psalm 147, verses 3 to 5. If you have your Bibles or your Bible app, go ahead and open up to Psalm 147. And we're going to look at a whole series of different passages. Sometimes, like we went through a whole series in Romans where we would look at a, a chapter or a section, we'd stay in the same book. We're going, to, we're going to kind of walk through passages all over the Bible because this message that God is on the throne isn't contained in one passage. It is the message of all of Scripture. The theologians would say God is sovereign. He rules and he reigns. He's the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Like we, like we learned in the first week of this series, Adore, that he's the God who is with us. He is, he, he is the God who is Emmanuel, God with us. In the second week when we had Pastor Josh visiting with us, that he is the Messiah, the King. We have learned that God rules and reigns no matter what we're experiencing. And I hope that through this message, your heart is captured by that reality. So he's, he's on the throne. He is the great healer. Listen to these words from Psalm 147, beginning in verse three. He heals the brokenhearted. He binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. He heals the brokenhearted. The God on the throne is the God of healing. He heals hearts. But then you go to the book of Isaiah. And we read these words in Isaiah 53, beginning in verse 4. And this, this is a prophetic word about the coming Messiah, the coming Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. And Isaiah prophesies and he says, surely he took up our pain and he bore our suffering, our physical pain, our suffering, our heartache. He bears those things. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he, Jesus, was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. That's our savior. Emotional healing, relational healing, psychological healing, physical healing. Now, the Bible doesn't say that everyone gets healed of everything all the time. But there are times where God chooses to step in in amazing, miraculous ways. Just, just remind us, sort, sort of whisper to us or shout to us, I'm on the throne. Whatever you face, even, even where you need healing, I am the God who still has the power to heal. We have a story from Tom Green. We have two Tom Greens in our church. And we'll often say, Tom Green with the extra E. This is the Tom Green with an E at the end of green. But Tom's going to share his journey of God's power of healing this year in 2020, in a year of COVID, the presence of God's healing. Let's just listen to that story and hear what God has to say to our hearts through Tom's story. Well, I've actually had a 17 year journey uh, battling cancer and battling cancer for 17 years is an, a bit of a victory in itself. But uh, I have um, a case of advanced metastatic thyroid cancer. So the last year and a half has been a little bit different. You know, uh, since the beginning of 2019, um, when we uh, moved down here, which is right about that time, I was in the middle of that phase one clinical trial, cocktail, drug cocktail, you know, immunotherapy stuff. And, and it was working on my lungs and that was great. It was really attacking the cancer. And, um, but I had this growth in my spleen that started to appear in early in 2019. And, and we watched that for a year and a half as that slowly grew a little bigger, 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 until it got to be, you know, about three centimeters or something. And, and get to May of this year, and, um, and all of a sudden, you know, the doctor's like, uh, that's growing pretty steadily. You probably ought to think about radiation treatment. Um, it's not a great treatment, has a lot of side effects, and it's, it's gonna be, you know, there's gonna be downfalls or down, downside to it. Um, so I prayed about it, I thought about it, and, and I finally said to my doctor, I, I think I wanna wait one more scan, one more cycle, three more months, and then we'll consider the radiation. And that was in May. Um, and then that's where God did the healing. And when I went in for my August treatment or scan, after, after a year and a half of watching this thing grow, I go in in August and they can't even find it. 
It's not even on the x-ray. The, the, matter of fact, the technician even put something at the end of the, the x-ray report the, or the CT can, scan report that said, um, you know, uh, interested in what, what treatment therapy resulted in this or something like that. They just, they were like, what happened? Um, and I know that, you know, this happened to be a time that God out of his grace decided, uh, we're just gonna take it away. And, uh, and so I now, no problems on my spleen, you know, the, the drug treatments had tackled a lot of the other cancer and I'm actually in a better spot than I've been in 17 years. I don't know where my journey goes from here, right? It's been 17 years. My, my kids were tiny when this started, now they're all grown up. And um, so I don't know where this journey goes from here with my cancer. I know I'm not done, and I expect the rest of my days there'll be something either watching, keeping an eye on, or maybe it comes back. But I know God's been faithful, and so I know I can trust Him, and I know He's going to be with me through whatever the future holds. I hope you heard Tom's words, but I know God is faithful, and He does. And I know God is faithful. And you, if you've walked with Jesus for any length of time, you know God is faithful. Again, the Bible doesn't say that we'll never struggle, that we'll never have relational struggles or emotional struggles or physical struggles, but God is always with us. And there are those times where God just reminds us and shows us that he can reach down and touch and heal. I loved in Tom's testimony where he said at the end, he said where the doctor, one of the doctors looked at his report and said, you know, I'd be interested in knowing about what kind of therapy healed this. And if you ask Tommy, he said, I'll tell you what kind of therapy healed it, the power of Jesus. And so I want to ask you a question. How have you experienced God's healing touch in your life? Even in a difficult year, has God reached out and touched and, and brought healing to you? Have, have you experienced physical healing? Have you experienced relational healing? One of the ways that God heals is in, when a relationship is in turmoil and, and God says, I can restore this, maybe through a lot of prayer, through humility, through counseling, through conversation, through reading scripture, but, but God brings his healing into our lives. God heals broken hearts. Uh, there's, there's some of you that have had heartache this year that's even hard to put into words. And yet you've also felt God come alongside of you and touch and heal your heart in the course of a difficult year. Fractured minds, people with emotional turmoil or, or, or mental struggles, and to be able to say God can reach out and touch us. In, in, in a year like this, let's remember that God is on the throne. And when we need healing, we go to him and we cry out and we ask healing of any sort. And we trust into his hands, we commit ourselves. And sometimes God touches and brings the healing, we give him praise. Sometimes God says, not now, and we give him praise. But we know he's on the throne no matter what. Well, here's the second uh, kind of thing as I think about this last year that I want to ponder for a moment together the idea that God's on the throne. In a year of political tensions and conflict, God is still Lord of the universe, King of our lives, and the Prince of Peace. You might have noticed in 2020 that there was a bit of tension. Uh, there was some conflict. Even in some families, people who've kind of always got along and have, have navigated not getting sideways about things where they maybe have different perspectives on, on how the world should work and how things should go. And yet this is a year that things just seem to get particularly antagonistic. And, and, and yet in all of that, God is on the throne. Listen to these words from the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 4 beginning in verse eight. And I'm gonna just read a number of verses and I hope you can open your Bible or open your Bible app, follow along and just get this picture of this God who is on the throne. In this, in this passage, it literally talks about how the God is on the throne. That language is used. Revelation 4, eight and following. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and they, covered, they were covered with eyes all around, even under their wings, day and night. They never stopped saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and they worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and they say, you are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they were created and have their being. The God that we adore, the God that we worship, he, is, he sits on the throne. It is an eternal throne that will last forever and ever. His kingdom will never end. 
In a world where there's political and social unrest, that's good news. That brings comfort. Let me ask you a question. Do you see God high and lifted up over all leaders, powers, and world systems? Do you understand that every leader, every national power, every world system dwells under the hand of God and under the sovereignty of God? We, we can look and get nervous and get afraid, and we should be engaged. We should be prayerful. We should do all we can to help make the world all we believe that the Lord wants it to be. But when things don't go quite the way we thought they should have gone, we know this. God's on the throne. There is one kingdom that lasts forever and ever, and one ruler who sits on that throne. And that is the living God. One God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I don't know about you. That brings me comfort. That brings me hope. That assures me. Here's a question. Do you see God high and lifted up over all leaders, powers, and over all world systems? You see, God is on the throne. And so, so I just want you to just for a moment, just kind of quiet your heart. And if it helps to even close your eyes, and not so much as a prayer, but as an exercise of reflection, I'm going to just say a couple of things that I want that, that are absolutely true. And I think for some of you coming to the end of a year and the beginning of a new year, you need to let this truth sink in. So just quiet your heart and listen to these declarations. God is above all political parties. Our God is above every political party. Those are man-made structures, but we worship one who sits on the throne. Reflect on this. God is more powerful than world leaders. Every world leader will one day die. Our God is eternal. Abraham and Isaac and Jacob worshiped this God. Joseph saw God show up and move. Moses met this God in a burning bush. I could walk through the scriptures. The prophets heard the voice of this living God. He has been on the throne since before we, we were born. He will be on the throne when we're in heaven one day and he rules and he reigns. Just let that sink in. Quiet your heart and hear these words. Let this sink in. God is never worried about who wins an election. That may make you bristly. You may struggle with it. But I'm telling you, God isn't worried. You want to know why? Because God doesn't worry about anything. He's sovereign. He's on the throne. He's not out of control. And I think some of us are becoming so anxious and so nervous and so worried as if, as if one human being is the defining factor of our future. The only human being who defines the future is the one who was born at Christmas, who we adore, whose name is Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God in human flesh. Trust in him. When you, when you start getting nervous and anxious, just close your eyes and look to the throne of heaven and see Jesus Christ high and lifted up, exalted and powerful and say, Jesus, I trust in you. Man, I'm nervous about this or that. I don't like where things are going. I don't like where things have been. I don't like what I'm hearing, but I trust in you. God, give me a vision of you. This is why I love the book of Revelation. I've been spending this whole year memorizing in the book of, of Revelation with a, with a group of people in our church that have been doing a Bible memory thing together. I've got two chapters of the book of Revelation in my heart and my mind, but the vision of Jesus Christ high and lifted up in his power and his authority, that gives me hope, that gives me comfort. The more anxious you get, the more you need to look to the throne and see that he's seated there. And you know what? No one's bumping him off that throne. And however votes turn out, it doesn't change that ruler, the one who rules and reigns for eternity. Let that give you comfort. Let that give you hope. Let that give you assurance. One last thing, and just kind of quiet your heart and drink this in. God's throne is everlasting, and his kingdom never ends. And he shall reign forever and ever. Man, if that doesn't give you comfort... If you can't let that sink in, you got to go back to the word. You got to think about it. You got to meditate on it. You got to hear the truth. So a pastoral encouragement, get involved in making a difference in our world. Yes, vote. Yes, express your opinion. Yes, be an influencer. Yes, take action. We're a church of action, man. We're a church that's serving the poor, helping people. Do all you can, but don't ever forget who's on the throne. Kings and kingdoms come and go. God's throne is there forever.
I hope that you can just kind of go, oh, that's good news. Let's move ahead. In a year of financial upheaval and economic uncertainty, God still blesses and gives perfect gifts. This has been a year for many people that's been a financial struggle. And yet God is still the giver of good gifts. Listen to these words from Philippians chapter 4, beginning in verse 18. I have received full payment and I have more than enough. I'm amply supplied. Now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, they are a fragrant offering an acceptable sacrifice pleasing to God. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. My God will meet all your needs according to the glory of Christ Jesus. Listen to these words from the book of James. In James chapter 1, verse 16. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Every good gift is from God. Some of you have had hard years. Some of you are finishing in a tough year and starting the next year in an even tougher situation. But God is still present. I, I want you to hear a, a, a testimony of David Cater. And David has had a rough year, but he's met Jesus. Why don't you listen to his story and let God speak to your heart. I'm David Cater, and um, I lost my job back in April uh, as the coronavirus started to sweep uh, across our county. And I was working in the tourism and hospitality industry uh, in tourism development. So I had a great job where I got to develop international inbound tourism into our destination. And then all of a sudden, it just, uh, it just ended. Uh, so after I got laid off, um, I had been praying, uh, asking God to enrich my prayer life and to draw me closer to him. And um, I reached out to our neighbors uh, on uh, to text them and ask if they would consider donating food to the food pantry here at uh, Shoreline. And uh, they were happy to do so. And so every week on Wednesday, they would come and deliver uh, bags of groceries on our front porch and I'd bring them here to the, to the church. Well, after a few months of doing that, it really opened up some conversations uh, with our neighbors. And um, I think we connected in a more meaningful way. They really look forward to Wednesday. Um, after a few months then, I started to volunteer with actually distributing food on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And shortly after that, um, just like Kevin, Pastor Kevin had been uh, talking about walking through a series of doors and steps, um, I was asked to serve as a prayer warrior for the, uh, for the food pantry. And what that meant practically was greeting people on the front lines and asking if I could pray for them uh, individually. And uh, what I found was that people were really receptive to, to prayer. Um, almost nobody turned down prayer. Um, and whether they showed up in a nice car or a car that barely made it up the hill, uh, whether they were wearing nice clothes or from any background, uh, they had real honest prayers that they, were, that they would ask for. And um, that stretched me and I really had to lean into God. God's really used my uh, heart, the, the hard times I've been through, the trials, whether it's losing my job or going through a, a past illness um, as a way to reach out and minister to the community. And um, the hardest part about losing my job was that I was no longer in a position to serve our hospitality community and to benefit our community. I really mourn that, but um, instead God's replaced it with something that's even better um, because I've been able to, uh, to connect with our community who's in need. This has been a great way for to spend time and, and I feel like God's preparing me for something that I don't know exactly what that is right now, but I know that this is part of his training period, part of his preparation for, uh, for the next step in my life. I hope that testimony blesses your heart as much as it blesses mine. To hear somebody say, I lost my job, I've dealt with some health things, but through this year, I've got another gift. I've got to know my neighbors better. I invited them to get involved. I asked my neighbors to give food to me to bring to the food pantry. And he began, then, he, then I began serving in the food pantry. Then I began praying for people. And, and you could see it in David's eyes. He's received a gift from God in a very difficult time. God is on the throne. He still gives good gifts. Here's a question for you. How has your heavenly father poured out good gifts on your life this year? And have you overflowed to others? Have you recognized that even in a time of difficulty, God is always bestowing good gifts? And when you receive those, do you quickly say, how do I share those with others? J just for reflection, understand that every breath you breathe is a gift from God. 
So feel that, feel that gift. Each time you can breathe in and out, say, God, I thank you. Every resource you have is from God. So leverage it in some way for his glory. Everything you have comes from the hand of God. So share it freely and joyfully. Every ability you have is given by God. So develop it and use it to be a blessing to others and use it for his glory. Well, here's another area that I want to think about how God is on the throne, even in a challenging year. In a year of face masks, social distancing, and sheltering in place. God is still our closest friend and as near as a breath. God is with us even in these times where maybe we're alone or isolated or, or feel kind of, kind of cornered into a place. God is still there. He's still with us. In John 15, beginning of verse 14, Jesus is talking about his followers, about us. And he says, you are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know what his master's business is. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I have learned from my father, I have made known to you. Your closest friend is as close as breathing. Your closest friend should be Jesus. If you're a Christian, I hope you walk with Jesus as your closest friend. If you're not yet a follower of Jesus, I want you to know that when you come to faith in Jesus, you will have a closest best friend who will always be with you, never let you down, and whatever you go through, he's right there with you. Uh, We have somebody in our church who I met with this last week to pray with. And I'm not going to a lot of homes to pray with people, uh, but Patrice was on the, she was on the first leadership team of Shoreline Church. And Patrice uh, is in her 90s. And she's been living on her own uh, in Pebble Beach in the home that she was in with her husband. And, uh, and he passed away years ago. But she's moving uh, to Utah to be near family, to be with her daughters, and then to live with her daughter. So I went to just spend time with her and pray with her, socially distanced from her but just to pray with Patrice. And I got to tell you, um, she, uh, she is so grateful. And she said to me, she said to me, you know, I've been alone a lot this year, but I'm never alone. Her closest friend is Jesus. She's never alone. Well, one of our Shoreline members, Michelle Burnett, uh, has a story to tell that I think will encourage your heart, just understanding that God is with us through these difficult times. Watch this testimony and let the Lord speak to your heart. I had already recently retired in the last year, so I was staying at home more. So that part didn't change, but I think the lack of outdoor contact with people, both um, in person and just changing, going to Zoom, as opposed to being able to have that personal contact with people. Shoreline Church was instrumental in helping me to lean on God. Um, The women's Bible study went from meeting in person um, to going online. And I became more active online, obviously. So I I did both Bible study and a book club. Uh, One of the, I guess one of the the, um, scripture passages that came into play during COVID in one of the Bible studies was Joshua 1, 9 through 10. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for God is always with you. And that really helped. Well, I think when you're alone, um, you have more opportunity to be even more reflective and sometimes hear the devil instead of hearing God. And so those words were very encouraging to know that God is always there even when sometimes we feel alone. Well, what a sweet story of just recognizing that God is with us. The God who's on the throne is the God who's right there with us, whatever we're walking through. And and then a final kind of area of reflection, thinking about in in this really challenging year, how God's on the throne is this. In a year of online and outdoor services, with many church gatherings canceled, God is still the Lord of the church, and his bride is still beautiful and powerful. Yeah, the church has changed this year. We've done things differently. Here at Shoreline, we have tried all we can do to make every opportunity to connect people. But it's been challenging. And you've engaged in lots of different ways, including today being online. But in the midst of all of that, we recognize that God is on the throne. He loves his church. And so listen to these words from Hebrews chapter 10, beginning in verse 23. Again, if you have your Bibles or your Bible app, go to Hebrews 10, 23. And just listen to these words of encouragement. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. 
And let us consider, let us ponder, let us think about how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Put the spurs in, baby. Challenge each other. Come on, love, good deeds. Keep moving forward towards Jesus. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Let's encourage each other to be together. As we go into a new year, if you haven't come on campus for a service yet and you feel like, I think I'm ready for that step, jump in, get online, register, be part of that. If, you, if, you are, um, if you're just saying, listen, I'm, I'm ready for that step, but I'm a little bit nervous, come in your car. And then the next step can be maybe jump into the courtyard and you'll realize we're doing, we've not had one spread of COVID between any person at Shoreline that, that we have any record of. We are so careful. And if you're still at home, that's okay too. But, but reach out to other people around you and connect with them. We have a, a short video testimony uh, from Leah Rice. What's exciting about Leah is she's part of Shoreline Church. In this strange year where coming to church is a little bit challenging, she lives thousands of miles away, and she's still part of Shoreline Church. She'll share her story with you. My name is Leah Rice, and I'm a third-year vet student in Dublin, Ireland. My husband Brian and I moved here about two and a half years ago now, and we've been a part of Shoreline for about the last five years. Remote church during our time here in Ireland, um, as well as through COVID, I would say especially through COVID, has been invaluable. Um, it brings a sense of peace and hope and an inspiration to live for Christ every day, despite our circumstances. Being able to tune into the live services and sing along with the worship song and hear God's message is life-changing. It sounds cliche, but it honestly is life-changing. I've had to press into God even more this past year. This year has been one of the hardest in terms of isolation, being away from home for so long, and the challenges of a professional school. So being connected to a church, even remotely, holds a sense of community and belonging. Through the services, the weekly readings, uh, the Shoreline Conversation podcasts, um, the Holy Spirit has been challenging me and showing me how to truly walk with Jesus and to walk with others in this life. The Lord has given me joy when the world has given me no reason to be joyful. This work of the Holy Spirit comes in being community with other believers, even when it is across the world. Don't you love Leah's story? And I can tell you people who can repeat that story. I've got some friends in, in Bay Harbor, Michigan, who their church this year has been Shoreline and they're with us every week. And so the folks in Bay Harbor, God bless you. We have friends who are a part of, in Houston who are part of Shoreline Church and they're out here maybe a couple months a year. But there's one person in our church here at Shoreline who lives in Houston where a bunch of people on their, on their block where they live are now part of Shoreline because they've all been kind of shut in and they've jumped in and become part of the Shoreline community. In a changing world where the church has faced a lot of challenges, we're still the body of Christ. And I loved in Leah's testimony how she said, even with all she's gone through this year, knowing she's part of a body, we're part of the body of Christ, part of the church brings blessing and hope. So I want to encourage you, stay connected. If what you can do is online, then stay online and maybe go a little bit deeper. Jump into one of our Wednesday classes, jump into a women's Bible study, a book club, uh, get your kids engaged in something, get on campus when you can, but if you can't, stay connected online. When you're ready to get involved on campus, we're gonna, as soon as things open up, whenever we open up, we're gonna be right there, ready to step in and make it available to you. So you can say, I can go online, I can go on campus, I can go in the car, but I wanna be there for worship, for gatherings, for groups. Our middle school and high school kids are gathering outdoors in the courtyard. We've got tents in the lower parking lot with heaters for kids' gatherings. We're doing all we can to keep being the church. And can I say thank you for your prayers Thank you for your service and thank you for your generosity. We couldn't do what we're doing without the resources of God's people helping us continue to be the church. And one more encouragement. Will you reach out to somebody you miss? I know coming to the end of this year, you've had run through your mind maybe a dozen times in the last month or two. I really miss seeing that person at church. I really miss seeing that person. And you've thought to yourself, I'll drop them a note, I'll text them, I'll give them a call and you haven't gotten around to it. Would you do it this week? Would you do it today? Would you drop a note? Would you send a text? Would you give an old-fashioned phone call and just say, "How I've been thinking about you. You've been on my mind. How are you doing? 
I've been doing that with quite a few people at the church, and every person I contact is just so glad to talk. Let's keep being the church, the body of Christ together. So the question, what does 2021 hold for Shoreline Church? I am not a prophet, and I'm not a big on predicting things either. So what's 2021 hold? I don't know. But I know that God is on the throne. He rules and he reigns. We will worship and we will see his healing touch and we will be the body of Christ and we will shine his light in the world. We will be the church and be his people. And if you're not yet a follower of Jesus, I encourage you, you call Shoreline Church anytime and say, I'm not yet a follower of Jesus, but I want to know more about what that means. I want to have, find some opportunities to learn more about Jesus. We will walk with you and do all we can to help you walk with Jesus. So whatever you face this last year, whatever comes your way in 2021, will you say from the depth of your soul, God is on the throne. He rules, he reigns, and his kingdom will never end. Oh God, our prayer is that we could walk in that reality. Eyes open to the fact that there are struggles and pain and financial turmoil. Lord, there's a lot going on. But may our hearts be absolutely convicted and assured of the reality that you, O oh God, are on the throne. You are sovereign. You rule and you reign. King of kings, Lord of lords, Savior and friend, Messiah, God with us. We worship you. We celebrate you. We thank you for all you've done in us and through us in 2020. And we pray for an outpouring of new blessing into the new year. Go ahead of us and prepare the way. And let us follow you, our King, who rules and reigns, who is on the throne. We praise you and we lift this up in the glorious name of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just two invitations before I send you off with a word of blessing. Number one, if you want prayer, you're going to see an email address. Will you email that prayer need? And we will get our folks around that praying for that need. We promise to do that. And then second, if you're new to Shoreline, maybe this is the first time you're with us. If you'll text the word welcome to the number you see on the screen, we promise to respond back to you and give you what we call kind of a digital information card. You can tell us what you want to know about yourself. We'll answer any questions you ask of us and we'll connect with you in any way we can to help you discover what's going on at Shoreline Church. And if you want to know more about Jesus, we want to walk you with you on that journey. And so we're looking forward to a great year ahead. We're glad you're with us. I want to give you a word of blessing. And then I want to be the first one to wish you a happy new year, a couple days before it comes. So as we finish this time together, may you walk and live and have confidence and hope in the one and only God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who rules and reigns for all eternity, who sits on the throne of heaven, and whose kingdom will never end. Be at peace. God is on the throne. God bless you. Have a great day. This is a clip from the latest episode of our Shoreline Conversations podcast. Stick around to the end to find out how to listen or watch the full episode. That first question is the one that everybody remembered. And, and even now when I run into them, bar none, it's a very simple one. The question is, what do you mean by that? I mean, this it's so simple and so good. So if somebody um, would say to me, um, I don't believe there's any God. I mean, you know, nature takes care of everything. I, I, I can say, okay, well. Tell me when you say God what you mean, and tell me what you mean when you say nature. Mm -hmm. I'd like to learn more about it. Right. So you, that question opens a door for them, and they have to think for a moment uh, and add more words and more context to the word God in their view and the word nature in their view, or they just bail right then. Right. Uh, if they bail right then, well, then it's like, have a nice day. But most don't. So, so you ask that, what do you mean by that? What do you mean when you say? Or people say, well, there's all the evil in the world. Okay, I, yeah, yeah. So when you say evil, what are you thinking? What, 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 what's your meaning of evil? Mm -hmm. And it just slows me down. And I'm not ready to fire back my pack, prepackaged answers to everything. And I'm going to really explore. And we're going to start peeling this thing. So what do you mean by that?
You can find the full episode on our website, YouTube channel, or any major app or platform that hosts podcasts. Just search for Shoreline Conversations, and be sure to let us know what you think with a review and subscribe. 